Okay, so yes, I am John Cobb. I let me just arrange my mic. Okay, I was a contenders coach for Australia and Pacific teams, and I've since moved on. Uh, but right now I'm really just helping out people and teams by sitting in screams and helping people in one on ones. So today we're gonna look at a logo diva player. And as this person says he's a diva player, it, what do you write? He writes that he is a uh, diva. I mainly played Anna and Ryan last season, but I want to learn how to off tank. I don't really know how, how I should be deciphering what to do in the battlefield and pre fight. Do I go for the top turret, the doom that's destroying my team, the one support that's pocketing DPS on the other team? So, we are going to take a look at his game and we're going to see what's wrong. Uh, he, he, wrote, he wrote something uh, extra here, right? There's something adi there's some additional text over here. Just feel like I'm useless and I don't know who to go for or what to really do. I focus on the Doom since he was doing the most damage to us. Rewatching, I notice a turret that I probably should have dealt with it as well. Okay. Oh, okay. The, you know, the match history check, but you know, so many private profile nouns, it's really, really hard. <laughs> Uh, so they have a Orisa, they have a Orisa Zen Moira, they are, okay, it's a 3 stack, then for the DPS you have Torbjorn and Farah, okay. Okay, the first thing is, uh, as a diva, what's the most important thing you need to do right, at the start of the fight? In fact, what's the most important thing for any character to do at the start of the fight? Is to note the enemy's team composition. Because in your head, you can prepare uh, your, your, your abilities to battle suit what the enemy team is going to do to you. So for example, you see the Roadhog, right? Uh, and you are a diva. What, what does that tell you? It tells you that throughout the course of the game, or throughout the course of which the Roadhog is played, you have to keep in mind that people are going to get hooked. And you are, in, you are a character that can protect uh, players from this hook. Like, you can mitigate every single damage, like 100% of all the damage. So you that's what you are looking to do. So instead of uh, letting things happen, and then intuitive uh, and, and reacting, at the start of the fight, you can already prepare, prepare yourself for it. Because later on, when it actually happens, like if it happens like 5 seconds from now, or 10 seconds from now, y y your mind is already mentally prepared to react that way. Instead of like, you know, just automatically, re uh, automatically like, yo, you, you, you don't need to think through the course of action and then do it. Because you're already prepared for it. It's like inputting a script in your brain, and when something happens, when... Uh, when zero happens, one happens. So when like like A happens, B always happens, right? You don't need to go through the thought process. Do I do B or do I do C? Because at the start of the fight, you know there's a rohawk. You know you're going to defensive matrix or any hook target. You're just going to go straight to it. Okay, let's take a look. So throughout this thing, I'll be looking at your defensive matrix usage as well. If rohawk, say rohawk hooks anyone. So Dovis goes on the high ground. Uh, he, he, this is the second important thing as a diva player, especially as a diva player, right? Uh, you need to know what DPS they are running and what the DPS can do. And you also need to know, so let, let's, let's, let's put it down right here. So you need to know the enemy team composition, right? Enemy team composition. But underneath this, underneath this, you also need to know your own DPS and their DPS, their DPS, uh, their DPS. So you know like uh, what, your, where your DPS is going to play, where your DPS is going to threaten. So say you have like a, a, a player over here, right? So you need to know who this guy is. And you need to know that he's there at the start of the fight. You need to know where your Zen is. You need to know like what your fire is doing. You need to know where your Torbjorn is doing. Uh, what your, your the Torbjorn is doing. So generally, in your head, you know generally where everyone is. Because with perfect information comes perfect decision. So you can make perfect decision if you have perfect information, right? So if you don't have information, if the only person you can see is Orisa and the enemy, so you're looking at Orisa, you're looking at the enemy, and, and, and something happens into a backline, you're never going to react in time because you don't know what, you don't know who is in the backline, you don't know how they're positioned in the backline. Okay, let's continue watching. Why is it so pixelated? Let me just change it to default high. 
Okay. So it's top down top. So you don't know where your Zen is. Your Zen could be playing like in Clock Tower, right? He could be playing like, let me just pull this thing out. He could be playing like uh, at your let's King's Row, King's Row, King's Row, King's Row. Let's put Lala, All right? So, so let let's look at this, All right? And then if the enemy is pushing in this way, enemy is pushing in this way. And you are over here, right? Yeah, over here. Let's let's use red for the enemy. So red, they're pushing in this way, and you're standing over here. Do you know where the top is? Uh, sorry, do you know where your Zenyata is? Do you know where your Torpion is? I mean, later you know your your, your Torpion is playing here, but where's the rest of the team position? Uh, is it the Zen? You have a Zen. Is your Zen over here? Is the Zen over here? If I pause the clip, right, and I ask you, where's the Zen? You're not gonna know where's the Zen, right? You have to wait until he appears in the game play before you know where's the Zen. And this is really really important because if you know the Zen is over here. And the Doomfist immediately goes for the backline, or the Doomfist goes to the hotel. Uh, sorry, I was supposed to use read. It goes in the hotel. You know exactly how to rotate, right? But if you don't know where the Zen is, and things start to happen, and then you're thinking, oh shit, I need to protect my Zen, you need to look at where he is first. So, what you need to do in the future is at the start of every fight, at the start of every fight, you look at where DPS position, and you look at where they will generally be. Alright, it doesn't. If you know where. like. People that are less mobile have a more relevant position at the start of the fight. So if you have a Zenyata, the Zenyata is definitely not going to be moving around much because the Zenyata doesn't have any... Uh, it's a very static character. So if your Zenyata is positioned here, he won't like suddenly find himself... You won't find the Zen over here like 10 seconds later. He's just not that mobile. Uh, if you have a Tracer, then you, you don't need to look at Tracer so strictly because Tracer is going to be all about around the map, right? You still need to know the general sense of what your Tracer is trying to do and where your Tracer is, but it's he's definitely going to be a lot more... Uh, it's definitely going to be a lot more mobile around the map uh, as compared to a Zen. So it's really important you need to know where your Zen is, you need to know where your Torbjorn is, you need to know where your Torbjorn turret is because these are more static and placement. And of course you need to know where your Orisa is, but I mean that, that part is obvious. The Orisa is always standing in front of you. So. So this is a generally good peer because uh, you went for the Doom Fist, right? And yeah, and you protected a uh, Torbjorn. Torbjorn was actually quite low on HP, right? He he was like, let's let's look at uh, Torbjorn's like this. And if you didn't go out, uh, if you didn't go help him, it's likely he would die to the uh, to the Doom Fist. Something you can do better is you can turn on defensive matrix because you can defensive matrix as you fly, right? So uh, the boop on Doomfist is good because you push Doomfist into into this wall over here, so you no longer can shoot the Torbjorn. But what you can do is also like defensive matrix like somewhere like like here, like like here. You can start defensive matrixing. So the Doomfist left click doesn't hit the top doesn't hit the Torbjorn. So that that's your job, right? You kind of want to like uh, displace the diver, but you also want to mitigate the damage that uh, the DPS or the enemy tanks are doing to. Uh, anyone that's in danger. So this is a good pill. But it could be better. Right, so uh, there's a general misplay. It's, uh, it's not that important. Mechanical uh, mechanical misplays generally can be improved just by playing the game more. But uh, you, you actually had an option. Wait, you actually had an option to slide to the right. So right here, right? You drop. What you can do is uh, you can move a little bit to the right, like one meter to the right, and what happens is the Doomfist will go, is going to punch you and can kill the Doomfist. But what happens is you allow the Doomfist to punch past you, which you could have obviously stopped just by body blocking. You know, yeah, but but of course that means that you have to you know you have to know exactly where the health pack is and you need to angle yourself uh, properly, which comes with more hours in the game, I guess. You I can see you have like a hundred hours in the game, right? And generally that's not a lot, so. Yeah, maybe another 200 levels and you'll start to do things like that. <laughs> yeah, let's continue watching your gameplay. Okay, what do you do wrong here? Right, before I tell you what you did wrong here, what do you think the diva did wrong here? So let's watch that one more time. You have you have your you have two two you have two abilities available to you. Do you see? You have your booster, 
you have your defensive matrix and you haven't used your defensive matrix like throughout the entirety of the, uh, the time you have been in this room you didn't use your defensive matrix like all right you don't need to use the defensive matrix here you, you, you're just you're shooting your doomfist, just shooting the doomfist and you really shouldn't be going for the doomfist now because the doomfist is going to demac you why because he's getting pocketed by the mora so right here what's happening here is a 2v1 situation right it's a 2v1 situation you need to realize that it's a 2v1 situation a lot earlier in the fight and you have to react accordingly so if this is the timeline right and then this is where the moira comes in this is moira let's put a, a capital m uh and 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 this is where you're trying to kill the doomfist and you tech if the mora isn't here if say we, we the mora isn't here you technically would kill the doomfist like somewhere here like let's let's draw a scale right you technically kill the doomfist like somewhere here but because the mora is over here because the mora is uh uh healing the doomfist uh, the Doofus is no longer going to uh, no longer going to die to your damage. In fact, he's going to demac you instead. So you need to see that Amora comes. You need to realize it's a two versus one, a two versus one that you cannot kill anyone, and you are going to in fact demac from these two versus one skirmish. And you need to pop your defensive matrix. You need to fly immediately away. You need to get the fuck out of here. Like this is yeah, it, all, all, all you're going to demac. And if you demac as a diva, that's a death right there. So. Right here is a misplay because you didn't recognize the scenario. You didn't manage to recognize it was 2v1, a 2v1 that it was unwinnable, and you didn't use the correct ability to deal with the 2v1, which in this case would be defensive matrix. Fly out of here. Just fly out of here. Get out of here. Go go find someone else, to, something else to do. Because anything is better than demacking right here. Okay, you demect again. So let's let's take a look at the, this whole phase, and let's see whether you can actually prevent yourself from getting demect. So every demect, remember, every demect is a death. Okay, so I see what's going on. So. Before I tell you what's going on, right here at this moment, I want you to tell me, I want you to keep in your mind what do you think is your mistake right here. I want, to, I want you to think what is your mistake right here. Now let, let's go back to the start, right? And, and anyone watching this video, what do you think is the, the diva's mistake? Okay. So have you decided what your mistake is? So there are multiple mistakes here. Uh, I, I'm going to split into three components, right? Three components. Uh, let's use three. One, two, three. So the first component, the first mistake, sort of the first uh, major mistake is uh, misposition. Misposition. So why why you do you misposition? Okay, first of all, you have an Orisa. So what's the strength of an Orisa as compared to like the Winston? An Orisa is a show tank, right? This is how an Orisa and Ryan are show tanks, which means that they inherently can mitigate damage just by using a very cheap ability. Like they, they, it doesn't. It's really easy for them to mitigate damage. Reinhardt just needs to hold down right click. Orisa just needs to throw down the shield, and then there you have it. You have uh, you have damage mitigation. So the difference between Orisa and Ryan is that Reinhardt, uh, you're dependent on the Reinhardt to mitigate damage, right? If he doesn't want to click the right click, right, and then. then He's throwing again. <laughs> okay, no, not throwing again. But if he doesn't, if he doesn't hold up his right click, now nah, he's just always swing hammer. Then, uh, you, you can't do anything about that, right? Because you're you're not controlling his show usage. You're not controlling his 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 middle finger doing the right click thing. Uh, but if the Orisa uses his her show, this is something you have control over because Orisa show is static, right? So you can position anywhere you want. You could like move in. You could move out. You can do anything, right? You can do anything with this show. It's up to you. 
it's exactly how you want to position, right? The only time that you can't do that is if, say, Orisa is throw, throwing the, the, the shield, throwing the game, <laughs> and toss the shield, like, over here, or, or, or some, somewhere that's, like, totally useless, like, at, at the enemy spot. Then, all right, then you can't do anything about that. But right now, he's playing the shield on the point. You're expected to know how to position with regards to this shield. So, misposition. Uh, uh, we'll talk more about that. The second thing that happened... Oh, you know what? Let's talk about this first. So, what do I mean by misposition? Let's delete everything. No, let, let's let's write it over here. What misposition? Yeah, I'm sorry for the untidy handwriting. I'm using my mouse to write these words. All right, let's go. Misposition. So to actually see your mistake here, let's see uh, where most of the damage comes from. Because you demac right, so you died. So let's see where the most of the damage comes from. So look at your health bar. Look at the damage you're taking. Okay, so you lose like what? That's uh, 50 dam That's like 50, 75 damage, like 2 and a half bar from the Roadhog right clicking you. So that's that's, that's useless damage. So why, why do you take so little damage? Um, well, I think the Roadhog missed his right click, but whatever. Alright, let's continue watching. Alright, that one was a lot more painful. Do you feel that? No, that was armor. So that was your armor getting shredded, which means that any additional damage from now is going to hit like... It's gonna fucking stink. It's gonna really, really hurt. Like any additional damage from now. So, so that's from Hanzo, and that's from Roadhog right click, boom, and that's from Roadhog, and you demand to Roadhog. So, okay. So the second thing is, I'm gonna put DM. So misposition and DM. So these two things happen at the same time. So so let's let's look at what happens here. So how do you let's look at whether you can mitigate any of this damage. So okay, he, he slides to the right. He he right clicks you, right? And then and then you you're reacting a little bit slow to that, but it's fine. You sidle to the left a little bit. Can you see? You move a little bit to the left, like here. Right, and you move you naturally intuitively move a little bit to the left behind the show, right? So that, that was good play. So what do you think right now should you move to the right? Should you stay where you are, or should you move to the left, right at this moment, right? So uh, I'm gonna make like a -na 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 -na, you know, the, the who wants to be a millionaire uh, soundtrack. All right, that, that, that was that was cringy, but um, so the, the answer is like option one, right? You, you need to move to the left. You need to move behind the show because uh, right now the robot can right click you and you're gonna die. You are definitely gonna you're definitely gonna die within like maybe two to three right clicks or maybe maybe three to four right clicks because he has to remove your armor first so right now if you slide to the left you're making the right play if you stay still or you slide to the right you're making the bad play so you slide to the right right you move a little bit to the right and you got right click um, armor is gone and then now you're still you're still exposing yourself you're not using the shell and you're still exposing yourself so you you need to think this way like if you stand here and if you stand here what's the difference like if you want to take damage over here, if you stand here, you're going to take way more damage, right? Way, you're going to take way more damage. So, it has to do something, right? It has to do something. If you want to stand at a place where you're going to take a lot of more damage, you need to be achieving a goal. So, maybe, maybe that's a Zenyata, like, I don't even know what you can do to stand here to take more damage. Maybe there's a Macri here, right? It's going to be quite niche. Maybe a Macri is over here and he's, he's high nooning and, and, and you kind of want a body block or whatever, like something really niche. Then perhaps you want to stand out of the show. But generally, you should be standing within the show. Because if you stand within the show, you don't need to use any defensive metrics. You don't need to use any resource. You can just shoot back and you don't even need to care about what's happening because the show is protecting you. So that's what I mean by... Uh, so one, out of position because you're not positioned behind the show. Two, uh, your, de uh, your defensive matrix because even if the show is not here you should be able to defensive matrix the storm ball so one thing about a diva is that you need to react to ability usage so if you see if you hear the storm ball and you, you know it's storm ball because Hanzo is firing really really fast okay that, that's storm ball right there a diva player needs to react immediately so you hear the first two three shots from the storm ball you turn to the Hanzo you defensive matrix like, uh, you just turn on defensive matrix and as you keep the defensive matrix on the Hanzo you reposition. So you move to the left, you move to the right, you move back with the defensive matrix because the defensive matrix is two seconds long. So you're going to use the two seconds to reposition. You're buying yourself two seconds to reposition without taking any damage, right? So if there's no show here, there's no show, or maybe the show is like right here. Like it's, it's like all the way flush the wall. It's like maybe two meters away from you. So, and you're out in the open. What you can do is you can defensive matrix all the damage that Hanzo is shooting to you. Uh, and then you move to the left behind the show. Yeah, so you're not using a defensive matrix. You're not using the show. Just two major mistakes right here. 
And last thing is, once again, you have booster, but you're not flying backwards. So right now, right, you, you can't get off the point. Like, why are you staying in the point? You don't need to stay in the point. Like, you're, if you stay in the point, you're going to team mech. Why, the only reason why you need to stay in the point in fights is because you want to contest the point. Right now, there is no need to contest because they, 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 hasn't, they haven't even got one thing. You can give them like, you can let them stay in the point for one, two seconds. It, it, it's no picky. So the, the party here is to stay alive and then later go back to recontest. Because you staying alive here is vital. You staying alive can contribute to the fight. If you fly out and you let uh, your, your Moira kill you with Coalescence, you can save yourself, right? The coalescence is bad. This coalescence is bad. This coalescence is not healing either of the tanks. So this coalescence actually should be healing both of you. But we are not here to talk about other people's mistake. We are here to talk about yours. So let's continue. So what have we seen so far, right? Uh, very bad usage of defensive matrix. Uh, very bad usage of uh, booster. That's fine. But we, we, I'm going to criticize you, right? I hope you take it like, like a champ because... Uh, that's the best way to improve. So you have bad usage of booster, you have bad usage of defensive matrix, and you have poor awareness. You don't, you're not reacting to your own shell, you are not keeping track of your, your team's positioning, your, your team's like DPS positioning. Right, let's continue. Ouch. Okay, that, 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 that hurts. Your mortar head. <laughs> your, your your team is playing a Farah and your Farah has no there's no mercy so the only way your Farah can be healed is like the, the, the Zenyatta all. Like literally anyone in the enemy team could like pop out a Macri or a video and then the Farah is dead like there's nothing the Farah can do ah. I mean they will have to be competent Macri and video maker first but yeah Okay, so these are things that you can keep track of, right? These are things... Uh, you can start to... What you can do if you look at these ultimates is you can decide where to hold. So as a tank, uh, I, you're not the main tank, but something that you can do in lower ranks is you can like play really aggressively at a place that you want to hold, and generally people will push up because you are there. So what I mean is, say, say right here, right? Yeah, this pillar right here is for my back. I, I have like a weak lower back because yeah I, I, my, my, my chair sucks it's an old chair so I use it to prop up my back sorry if you if you if you if you, you guys are wondering like why is there a pillow on my side and why am I resting on it so anyway uh, so you have your Orisa play right here right and you kind of don't want to play right here like if I was playing this game I, I wouldn't want to play right here why because why not play over here why not play when there's a choke right because you have a far so is it easier for your Farah to like float up here and barrage down here? Say so there's a fight happening over here. Would it be like more safe for the Farah? Would it be safer for the Farah to barrage right here, right in the open? Or would it be safer if say the enemy fights over here, the pillar is over here, then the enemies like scatter and then there's like this roof and then the fire is over here. Right, this is better. Option two is better. This is option two, this is option one. Option two is better because uh, the enemy has to filter in. So like, let me, let me, let me see whether it's easier to use this. So say right. Uh, let's let's put let's put enemy enemies here. Let's use this is enemy Hammond. This is enemy uh, enemy Hammond is like underneath the underneath like this thing, right? So you, yeah, if you're far, you can't shoot the enemy Hammond unless you you can't shoot the enemy Hammond if you're like standing here because Hammond Hammond is over there. So let's say there's the enemy Anna and that's the enemy Lucio and that's the enemy uh, Doomfist, right? And that's the enemy Diva, right? And and here if they play like that and you're far, let's find far. Far is over here, right? And you're over here, right? You you can't you don't need to barrage anything. You don't need to. So what you can do, and your Orisa is like, uh, what you want to do is to play really aggressively because uh, it's easy for a far to kill people. So if the Hammond pushes out here, right, and then you you play really close to the wall and you rocket barrage, can these people hit you? Can these like these people hit you? They can't. Right, if you're up in the air, I'm not I'm not saying like you're on the ground, right? You're up in the air as high as possible. The, the tanks push through, the, the enemy team players, uh, the enemy uh, starts pushing in, and you stand over here and you barrage the tanks, right? The, the back line can't do anything. They can't do anything because the terrain, the rooftop over here, this thing over here, this thing over here is blocking them from doing anything, right? So let's, let's see if we can get a better angle. Yeah, if, if your far like stands here and barrage, right? And then the enemy tanks are over here, like 
the backline can't do anything to kill the far because the far is using like cover, right? This thing, this thing is cover. This this building, this building right here is is cover. So the enemy can't do anything to the far. So what you want to do is you want to play aggressively to hold an angle that far can operate very very efficiently from. So our result positioning here is is bad, right? And and, and not to mention like how did how did your Torbjorn even die anyway? He died like oh uh, he died really early. Yeah, but but. But your Torbjorn killed the video maker. I don't know, man. I, I don't even know what's happening. Anyway, it's a 5v5. So what you can do is your Orisa doesn't want to push up, which it's a very bad play from Orisa. But what you can do as a diva is you can push up like like up here. Right? So so you're kind of like mentally uh, challenging your Orisa to do likewise. So your, your, your Orisa, the next time she has her shell, she's gonna, there's a chance that she'll, she's gonna push up the shell, and, and this is very common in lower ranks, right? You push up, the, the other thing is like, oh yeah, I can push up over there, and then they push up their shell to, to protect you, and then they push up the shell with that. So this is like, kind of like, psychologically, uh, like, psychologically, um, yeah, manipulating your main tank to play at the correct position at lower ranks. But you, you have to first recognize that, that that is the position you want to play. Because if you don't know where you want to play, and then you're just following the main tank, and the main tank is doing the wrong things, then, yeah, then both of you... I mean, it's not... I wouldn't say this position is is really, really, really bad. But you can, you guys can do so much more if you position, like, like over here. Like, why give them this space for free? Okay. Oh, you can catch the oh, you can catch the dragon. Uh, maybe maybe that's a bit too advanced. You could have catched the dragon. It was a super telegraph. If you like fly right here, right? If you hear that stuff, right? If you watch Fury from the World Cup, right? honestly, it's not just Fury. Any diva would try to do that. You could fly right here, and you can catch the dragon like in the air right here. Yeah. No, may maybe not. The the dragon spawn was over here. Maybe you wouldn't be able to catch the dragon, but. You can, you guys can, you can still try. Like top diva players will just react with defensive matrix towards the sound of the dragon, whether they can catch it or not. And if the dragon appears, they'll just you know stop using defensive matrix. It doesn't cost you much anyway. Your defensive matrix comes back fast. See, see, your fire is planning to barrage. You can see the fire is planning to barrage. Like as long as you like play aggressively, as long as you, your Orisa and you are playing over here, maybe play at an off angle. So instead of playing over here, right? You can, you guys can play like 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 that. So you have two angles, one angle and two angles from the, the on the far. So you're like distracting them, cause you are like in front of the enemy right here, and then your far is over here. So if you use top down, uh, it, it's like you you guys are holding like like you guys are holding like the far is over here, and then and then you guys are like like here. Oh, that's you guys are like here. So that, that that's like a small trick you can use, right? So your your show is like here, and then the enemy attentions are all on you, like all these enemies, right? That all their all their manpower, everything is towards you. They're they're looking towards you, so they're not gonna see the fire come, and they're not gonna see the fire rocket barrage. So all these small positioning matters. So even though yeah, Orisa could like position like that, uh, everyone would just the enemy team would just like you know, uh, be looking towards the right side, and it also means that the enemy defensive matrix, the these device defensive matrix will cover like every single damage. But if you play like at an angle where this tank and this tank plays like that, and the fire that does like that plays like that, it's harder for the diva to. Uh, come up with efficient defensive matrix. No, no, the your, your defensive matrix is not gonna reach that far. This is way too far. You need to be like maybe one meter. Uh, yeah, you need to fly. Okay, what you need to do right here? Every single time of the fire defense, uh, rocket barrage. Every single time you know the fire has rocket barrage, you need to be prepared for it, right? So the far, uh, the far floats up here, like here, right? If I is on the left, you need to be prepared, you need to kit, you need to make sure you have your booster at the ready, you need to make sure you have defensive matrix at the ready, so you can just fly at the far. So, right here, right, and you're not paying attention, you're not You're not paying attention at all, because he's, def uh, he's rocket barraging, she's rocket barraging, and you're not doing anything. So, the correct way right here is is really just, you you, you, you see the far float up, you know, you read the far of mine, you move straight away towards the far, you fly towards the far, and you turn on your defensive matrix while you're flying towards the far. So uh, at at this at this point in time, even if you can't react fast enough, right? You could do you could do like the consolation method, the the, the second best method, which is instead of flying at the far one second before she uh, a rocket barrage, because that that needs like insane coordination. And at go, perhaps the far isn't ready, perhaps you are not ready, but something you can do uh, without 
needing like insane reaction time is the far flies up the far says you know like justice reigns from above what what is it that the far says again all right rocket barrage right and then you hear you hear the r you fly towards the sound of the r i hope you're wearing headphones you fly towards the sound of r and then you turn on your defense matrix it's not going to be as efficient as uh going straight for the far half a second before she rocket barrage because uh, if you do that then all the damage is mitigated you mitigate like two seconds of it but if you fly at her right now you can see that the far hp right here is already half right he's already half hp you can see it, it, she's already at half hp so if you even fly at her you're really just trying to prevent her from losing the second half of her hp but that's better than nothing what you're doing right now is you're not doing any of that you're not doing option one the best option you're not doing option two which is flying at her reacting right you're just doing option three which is which is not defensive matrixing her at all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's way too far. You need to know the range of a defensive matrix. What you can do uh, to know a range of a defensive matrix is go to the training range, right? Go to training range, the, your, 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 your bots, your bots takes damage, right? Like the, the blue bots and the red bots are shooting at each other. So you can walk to your bot, right? And then you defensive matrix the bot and see whether you suck up any damage, like you, you, you absorb any damage. And then if the answer is yes, you move back a little bit. And if the answer is still yes, you move back a little bit more. Sooner or later, you're going to move to a distance where the answer is no. When the answer is no, you know that that's the range of a defensive matrix. So every single time you're training in the training range, you can train that, right? Uh, so that you have an intuitive understanding that, all right, this is the range of my defensive matrix rather than, like, you know, defensive matrix thing, like, the, the, the far from, like, one mile away. And the idea is there, the idea is sound, but the reaction is slow, and your understanding of the range of the defensive matrix is also very, very bad. So, yeah. Once again, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's go back to the start. Oh, just letting the Doofus get the health pack, dude. Okay, the correct player right here is just to fly for the, the health pack. So right here, you, you can just fly into the health pack or walk towards the health pack. Honestly, you would get a health pack before him. Just walk into the health pack. I thought you flew into the room, but I mean, you, you walked back, you walked into the room, so. Like right here. Oh, okay. You f you flew. You flew into the room. Move to the right. Fly to the right. Get the health pack from him. If you get the health pack from him, you can win the one v one. You can win the one v one because he used all his cooldowns to kill the Zenyatta. Right? He used punch to kill the Zenyatta. I'm not sure whether he used uppercut. I I'm gonna assume he used uppercut, not just the punch. But even if say he used the punch on Zenyatta, okay, I'm gonna assume he just used the punch. Whatever the case, he's down one cooldown. Right? He doesn't have the punch or whatever he used just now. He doesn't have that. So the damage he's going to do to you, to 513 HP, is going to be severely reduced. So right now at this moment, all you need to do is take the health back, take the one-on-one -on, -one on him, and win the one-on-one. -on -one. Like the chance of you winning the, 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 this, this fight against the Doomfist, if you take the health back, it's like, it's really high. It's like 100% if, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, now, now the chance of you winning is like, it's a lot, a lot lower than 100%. 20% or something. It's arbitrary numbers. You're just gonna lose this fight. So you, you say that you are focusing on the Doom since you're doing the most damage to us, right? But one, yeah, uh, you're not doing a that great a job at focusing the Doom uh, Like right here, right? You didn't know where the enemy DPS was. Remember at the start of the fight, I said you need to know where your DPS are. You need to know where your supports are, right? Your Zenyata, the static, the immobile uh, target. So that, and you need to know where the enemy DPS is. So when the enemy DPS goes for the Zen, you are able to react before he actually hits the Zen. So say, uh, say the enemy like Doomfist. I, I don't know how how the fight at the back happens, right? Uh, I'm gonna assume that the enemy Doomfist is like moving by here. He's flanking from here. Like right, let's let's find Doomfist. I, I'm gonna assume the enemy Doomfist is like over here. Oh, ready to see you guys, right? So I'm gonna use blue for Doomfist. So enemy is here. This is confusing. I should I should use blue for you guys for your team, but whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna use red for Zen, right? And 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 Zen is over here, and Doom is over here. So and and you are over, you're over here, over here. So what's happening is the Doomfist goes into the back line, punch the Zen, the Zen dies, Zen dies, and then at this moment you move back. You go into the Doomfist, you let the Doomfist get, you, you move into uh, that point, you let the Doomfist get a health pack, and you lose to the Doomfist as well. So single-handedly, what do you do in this fight? You did nothing, right? Because you, you think you're protecting the team against the Doomfist, but do you actually protect the team? 
do you actually do you protect the the, the zen you didn't because you reacted to the zen after the zen already died so what's the correct play right here what should have happened you cannot say you're peeling for the back line if you are reacting like 10 times too slow like if you tried your best to go for the to help your back line like right here this is the doofy's over here you see the doofy's traveling in the air like maybe he's ground slamming ground slam punch or whatever combo he's doing right he's still transiting to a place where he can hit the zen you fly into the middle and you cut him off and the doofy has, has to fight you before he sees the zen the zen moves out to the doorway it's a 2v1 you see it's a 2v1 scenario right here that is peeling Right, because you protected the Zen. And even if, say, the Doomfist goes in for the Zen, right? Let's say the, you, you fuck up, you, you, the Doomfist goes for Zen, but you're already there before the Zen dies. Like, they are fighting. The Zen and the Doomfist fighting, but the Zen hasn't died yet, right? The chance of Zen dying, but you killing the Doomfist is pretty high. So it's a one for one. So it's, it's all right. But what's happening here is you're reacting way, way too slow because your awareness is not good enough. So the Doomfist goes in, kill the Zen, you're finally going in, you're only going in after the Zen dies. So this is not really peeling. This is just like, yeah, this is just slow reaction. This is no longer peeling. I, I consider peeling an act of uh, protecting your supports only when you're actually protect. You're trying to protect your support before he actually dies. After he dies and you turn around, that's just clean up, right? You're just trying to kill the person that killed your Zen. That's not peeling anymore. You're not. There's no one else to. There's no one there to protect. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to overload you with things, right? So, let's reiterate. What, what can you improve it? Defensive matrix usage, uh, your Divas booster, um, your positioning, your general positioning. Uh, yeah, that's that's the core point. There, there are actually a lot of mistakes. Like You could use boosters more efficiently. You could use your bomb more efficiently. There are many ways you could play more efficiently, but... Uh, in this case, we are going to isolate the things that this person can fix right now. So what you can fix right now is what you should try to fix right now is positioning. Uh, and positioning awareness, awareness and positioning are like, twi like twin brothers or, or twin siblings, right? They, they're, they're very, very connected. So they're really, really connected. So here is awareness. Awareness and this is positioning, right? Positioning. Doing one allow you allow you to to, to, to do the other better because they're they're so intertwined. If you know where they are, your positioning is definitely going to be better. You're going to react to the, uh, you know, you're going to do better, more correct decisions because you're aware of where your team is and you you have more information ahead. Remember, perfect information allows you to make perfect decisions. So you need to train your awareness. Right, you need to consciously remember at the start of the fight where this control center or where this hybrid has got, you need to know where your DPS are standing. You need to know where your Zenyata is standing. You, you know where your main tank stands because yeah, your main tank is generally in front of you. So you know where your Zen is, you know where your Ana is, you know where your DPS are. And then you keep this in the minimap in your head, right? You know generally where they are positioned. You're ready to react straight away when they are going to get, they're, they're going to be in danger. And the enemy comes in, you know their DPS. You see, like, alright, they have a Doomfist, that means that the Doomfist will always want to go for a backline, which means that I need to keep track of where the Doomfist is throughout the whole game, right? But that, that isn't happening in your game. You never know where the Doomfist is. So the only time where you know the Doomfist is, is when he's, he has already killed someone, right? Like, the only time that I saw you react in time, in this in this clip up to now, is the Torbjorn attempt, right? You flew towards to protect the Torbjorn in, at the start of the King's Row, like over here. Let's go back to it, like over here. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, here, here was fast enough. Let, let, let's say it's fast enough. But then your defensive matrix usage was bad. So you need to learn how to uh, f react doing this so this is peeling this is peeling right here because you you didn't go only after the torbjorn died right you, you're going when the torbjorn is in danger so this is this is fine but you're not using your defensive matrix well enough so the whole set of peeling to peel you need to use like multiple abilities and you need to be aware so you need to use your booster you need to use your defensive matrix and then you need to be aware so a good peel a good peel comes in when you use your defensive matrix dm let's use dm in short you need to use your oh that's a bad color let's use blue is blue better you know let's let's, let's increase the font so you need to use your dm you need to use your booster most of the time because your zen is not going to be standing like 
10 centimeters behind you, like one, one feet away from you. He's going to be standing quite far back to be safe. So you need to use your DM. Uh, you need to use your booster first. Uh, and this should be swapped out. You need your booster first. You see the Doofus coming on from your side, your peripheral vision. Going in for your uh, your, 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 your Zen, you use your booster uh, towards your Zen or towards the Doofus, depending on what, what, what the positioning is like. And then use your defensive matrix. And then you protect, you shoot, you start shooting the Doofus, right? While putting your body, your big size, tanky body between the person you're protecting and the DPS player. And then after you protect him, it's a 2v1, generally that guy's gonna die. But of course, how the next one is mechanics, right? You're actually gonna hit him, you're actually gonna shoot him, you're actually gonna make sure you kill him fast. Uh, if you're gonna take like 10 seconds to kill a Doomfist, uh, there's a chance that your Doomfist, even if you react fast enough initially, there's a chance that the Doomfist can kill your Torbjorn. So, yeah, it becomes mechanical skills once you start you start aiming down, focusing the Doomfist, not just to scare him away, but you're actively trying to threaten him, trying to kill him. But the start, it all starts first with DM, booster, and awareness. Because you need to be aware of this, right? You, if you don't know the Doofus is going into the backline, maybe you have like the world best defensive matrix and booster usage, but you don't know the Doofus is going into the backline, then your DM, your defensive matrix and your booster are useless because you're never going to react. The Doofus is going to kill you, the, your backline and then you're going to fly all the way back and you're going to defensive matrix and everything, but it's too late. The guy the guy has died. So awareness is real, like it's probably the most important thing, right? This true from LA Gladiators and Overwatch League team. He said that the most important skill set for a diva to have is awareness. Like he didn't say it was defensive matrix. He didn't say it was aim. He didn't say it was booster. He said the most important skill for a diva to have is awareness. And then, you know, because if you're aware, you're going to be able to react to anything. Even if you have bad DMs and bad booster, the moment you can, you see a Doomfist going, you fly for the Doomfist, you're going to threaten him, you're going to stop him from doing as much damage as he would in the past. Okay, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this, and uh, leave any comments down below if you have any. Yeah, if you, if you want me to speak slower, or, or you want me to review, you have a specific like preference for me to review, like maybe a N hour or a Zen. We are going to do a variety of uh, clips, so we're going to do tanks, we're going to do supports, we're going to do DPS over the next few weeks, and we are going to do it across a variety of SL. So we're not going to just do a bronze, silver, gold. We're going to do like uh, a GM top 500s as well. Maybe some pro players' uh, uh, point of view. So stay tuned. Okay, this is awkward. I got to shut out my.